I've got a story here on BoundedComics.com. Multiple CBR writers attack Eric July's ISOM number one campaign. One calls customers brainwashed. Uh, I haven't really talked a whole lot about, about Eric's rip or whatever you want to call it, with the ISOM in it. How, like, I mean, unbelievably, it's been doing. It, it has sold over 50,000 copies. And you've got over 40,000 backers. This isn't the case of, like, a small, small number of people buying multiple, multiple, I mean, obviously some are buying multiple copies, but to sell over 50,000 copies, that puts it up there. It's going to be one, it's, it's, it's one of the best-selling books of the year. I mean, Jesus Christ, is phenomenal. I was been doing, and none of these mainstream comic book sites cover it at all. Or when they do, they attack Eric, he's a, he's a racist, he's a sexist, he's a piece of shit, he's lying, he's grifting, he's doing this, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it's just, it's fucking absurd. You know, it's absolutely absurd. You know, as, as Eric goes on to say, two writers from the Ledge Comics website, CBR, attacked Eric July's ISO number one campaign this weekend. Both writers from the CBR site took exception to the pricing of July's graphic novel at $35, making statements that allude to him ripping off his customers. If people are, you know, people aren't forced to buy it. You know, I mean, if, if people don't want to buy it, then they wouldn't. It, you know, and we would, this wouldn't be a huge, huge deal. And, you know, David Harth tweeted to one of July's fans, you can go get Saga Volume 1, over 100 pages of excellent comic for $9.99, The Merry Deaths of Lila Star for $13, Watchmen for 25 bucks. This isn't a good value, you're just brainwashed. And, of course, as you can see, you got Ratio Dell. He compares the values of reprints to corporate properties, to a self, or of, of corporate properties, a self-made pre-order campaign, when it would be more apt to compare what Eric July is doing to kickstart or any google projects the same length of 96 pages which is exactly right one recent popular crowdfund skies of fire on kickstarter offered their basic books of similar length for 30 dollars a similar price point a little, little less you know mark wade's irredeemable campaign had a reprint campaign with, with its first issue a standard 24 page comic at 20 dollars in comparison to those joy's iso seems to be on par with what independent comics charge again it goes back to if, if people are buying it you know, and what's the problem? Well, he's got a gun to your head. Should he sell it lower? Sure, sure. He, he should sell it for $2. Okay, you know, what, go talk to Marvel and DC. And a place like that who are selling these goddamn comics for, you know, eight ninety nine and shit sometimes for, I think, like, 60 pages or, or, or whatever it is. And the stuff's not as good. The stuff is, is just, you know, crap, basically. I mean, essentially. I mean, let's, let's be honest here. The writing is, is preachy. And full of bullshit. He just goes on, and I'll, I'll link this in the description box if you want to read it for yourself. But it goes on. It's a pretty lengthy article, and it talks about, oops, you know, he also illuminated that there appears to be a policy at CBR not to cover right-leaning books. This is from David Hart. We don't cover comics gate either, mostly because both you and them are anti all the things we write about. Oops. The site used to be called Comic Book Resources before it rebranded to CBR, and one might expect, now this is not a quote, but, uh, and one might expect that they would be writing about comic books and comic news, of which I said number one should qualify as the book has sold more than 50,000 copies from 40,000 customers out of its writing. Very few comics from Marvel or DC reach such a threshold in sales, which makes this one of this one one of the top selling books of the year. And of course, it's not being covered at all. And on a live stream, he posits that CB, you know, July posits that CBR is admitting that they're a political operation on there to cover comics. You know, one, uh, <laughs> Hearth had this tweet, which said, that'd be like, Asking why Bernie Sanders doesn't have a column in a right-wing publication. You know, because this guy just asked. Also, I just realized you have pronouns in your bio, your bio and you write for CBR. True, but probably not the best way to get this guy to actually answer seriously. No wonder why you are against Ripper Verse. How come you guys don't have this story on your front page? And this guy, it's way above my pay grade. But possibly because he's one, one of many only exists to be against the things we write about. That would be like asking why Bernie Sanders doesn't have a column in a right-wing publication. I, I think that would be a good idea. Number one, I like having, you know, uh, contrasting viewpoints, but whatever. The implication is that CBR is a left-wing political blog, not a comic book news website. Ding, ding, ding. There we go. You know, if true, this marks a rare moment where the mainstream entertainment media admits its political biases. You know, it, it goes on to continue. Uh, it appears as if there's a coordinated narrative being crafted by the mainstream media against Eric Joy's comics. They get asked, you know, uh, and then Eric thinks that is the companies for these alleged news platforms get access to Marvel and DC books and act as mouthpieces of these corporations in exchange. I, I think that's 
likely. I mean, I don't want to sit here and say it's confirmed, because I don't know for sure, but it sure seems that way. It's just it's fucking ridiculous that they're not covering this. Even just to be like, you know, you don't have to come down one, one way or the other, but it's like in the news section, just be like, hey, ISIS number one has sold over 50,000 copies. You know? Anyway, it basically talks about is, you know, ISIS number one is one of the biggest stories in all of comic news. It seems dishonest to try to suppress the story by not reporting on it, which would be a disservice to readers of a comics news website. Exactly. Fortunately, readers have bound in the comics to cover all comic book news, regardless of the political persuasion of the character. You know, which is true. I mean, it's, it, look, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the whole, hey, let's, let, we, let's have our left wing websites and our right wing websites. I'm, I'm more in favor of just, let's, especially for news. For news, let's cover everything. If it's an actual news. Opinion and stuff, that's, that's different. I, I, you know, I understand that. But when it comes to news, you should be apolitical. Because it's news. You give me the facts and that's it. Spare me your opinion because more than likely I don't give a shit. You know, or if I do give a shit, I'll, I'll, you know, I can find it if you put it elsewhere. It's just, it's stupid that they're not covering this. This is one of the biggest news stories of the year in comics. And it's, it's not being covered in any way whatsoever. And it just shows their biases. And it's like, all right, guys, you know, I mean, hey, you're, all you're doing is exposing yourself. You're just, you're tearing off the mask. And you're just exposing yourself as political acts, essentially. I mean, you know, let's be real. Anyway, I'll go ahead and wrap this up here. I'll link this in the description box if you want to read the whole thing. Uh, thank you very much for watching and have a good one.